What do you think Khabib's going to do now? What do I think? Who? Khabib? Uh, yeah. Um, well, he does whatever the fuck he wants to do. That's what I think. I think that guy's probably the best lightweight of all time. He's a monster. Incredible. He, um, I think he's probably going to have some fights at 170 pounds eventually, if I'd imagine. At 155, there's, you know, there's good fights for him. Tony Ferguson's a great fight for him. Um, I'm really interested in seeing that. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing him going up. I'm really interested in seeing him fight at 170 pounds. I think there's a Who looked it from the for fight? Him. Well, first of all, Tyron Woodley, who's the champ mm -hmm. at 170, that, that would be an insane fight. George St. Pierre, if he decided to come back and make a big super fight, that would be an insane fight. I think 170 has a lot of opportunities for him. But I think 155 does too. They just have to figure out who's going to fight him. He's an international superstar now. You know, Khabib, especially the way he smashed Connor. Connor's such a superstar already that the way Khabib won and did it so dominant, <clears throat> I, think he's, I think he's through the roof now. I think when, people, when he comes back and people see the pay-per-view numbers of his fights, they're going to realize how, how huge this guy is. Because he's so interesting. He's very humble, very, very, uh, he's very polite, very well-spoken, you know, very religious guy, lives with his family, lives with his parents, mm -hmm. lives with his parents and his family, I believe. Yeah. I hope I'm not speaking out of school. I believe that's true. And obviously, he doesn't have to for money. I mean, he's rich as shit now. Yeah. But he's just a monster. The best, best grappler I've ever seen inside the 155-pound division. He just smashes people. He's what do you think about John Jones, though? What, in what way? In his, still, his skills. He's phenomenal. Incredible. The huh? best ever at using distance. He knows distance better than anybody. He's a master at knowing when he can hit you and you can't hit yeah, him. Yeah, I miss watching him fight. You know what I mean? He's not fighting as much anymore. He's back. He just Is won. He? Just won the title again. Just Who'd fought Alexander fight? Gustafson. Yeah? Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Was for a vacant <laughs> title? It was Daniel Cormier relinquished his title. Mm -hmm. And it was like... It's weird, right? Like Cormier is the champ because John Jones tested positive for something, so they stripped him, and then Cormier became the champ. It's, uh, you know, I think they'll probably fight again, whether they fight again at heavyweight or light heavyweight. Really? Yeah, I think Cormier and John Jones. If oh. Cormier wants to, if he yeah. wants to keep going. But he says he wants to retire soon. He's 40, you know? Yeah. He still looks good, though. He looks great, especially at heavyweight. Yeah, at heavyweight, good. he's he doesn't have to cut weight. He's got so much strength and just so agile. He's such an unbelievable wrestler, too. I mean, his wrestling skill, his mm -hmm. skill level and understanding of wrestling is so high. It's so above most people. Anybody he fight outside of Jim, John Jones, he dominated. Yeah, him. yeah. That's how good John is. Yeah. John's that good. He's that good. I mean, it just sucks that he's had so many controversies in his life, but I'm hoping he puts all that shit behind him. Have you ever spoken with him about yeah, that? Yeah, never about his personal life or anything, but we met before and talked. But you're a guy who's gone, I mean, when you went through legal problems yourself, you, you overcame, you came out of it on the other yeah. end. I think would think a guy like him could benefit a lot from talking yeah, but, to a guy you know, like so him. It's just so difficult and it's so unfortunate that he has to go through something like yeah. that, you know? Do you think so? Yes, it's really unfortunate, you know, because sometimes people, um, they don't survive situations like that. Because they're know? so wild and they're having yeah. a good time too much and they're partying and they're the champ. It has, to, it has to come to an end. That stuff, if you don't um, bring it to an end, it's going it to it's gonna come to its own end. It might not like that way it ends. Yeah. So you think for a guy like him, maybe getting in trouble was a good thing? If only if you learn from experiences like that, yeah. you know? I, I, think I, I was just a wild guy. I was really a wild guy. I look at myself now and I say to myself, when I spent all those um, trips in those um, psych wards and stuff, I said, what was that all about? What was wrong with me back then? You know? Yeah. And I must say, I was really disturbed back then. But you're somebody who got to the point where you got, like, it's really fascinating because I know, you know, you're a public figure. Mm -hmm. So, we, I, you know, I've been able to watch you my whole life. You went through all that stuff and then you got to this point where you are very self-reflective and you look at, you are able to comment on it. I don't think most, I mean, most people, regardless of whether they're famous or not, just still don't get to that point where they're able to look back and examine who they were and, and doing wild shit and with ruthless honesty. Yeah. yeah. That's what's you so have, great. You have to reflect on yourself to discover who you really are. 